Good, happy Wednesday morning, and happy hump day, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. Let's get started. First step, state files lawsuit against Oxycontin Manufacturing claims despective marketing practice. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9. In a mall, at a stadium, or in a parking lot, you may have heard some great stories or seen some fun robot selfies. That's because Nightscope's autonomous security robot... The state attorney general's office says Oxycontin maker Purdue Pharma opened the floodgates to opioid prescribing use and abuse. Now the state is suing them. We talked to a lot of prescribers. We looked at data from, from um, Medicaid and from the private health insurance markets. The civil complaint alleges Purdue has spent hundreds of millions of dollars since the 1990s on misleading marketing. It's accused of downplaying the risk of addiction and overstating its effectiveness. We see a lot of addiction, and most of the people who go to street heroin they start with prescription pain medication. Investigators say Purdue falsely claimed its product is nearly impossible to abuse and that it failed to report suspicious prescribers. What they didn't tell people was that if you're a chronic pain long-term user, your addiction risk is substantial. And if people knew that, and if doctors uh, had, had known that, they would have prescribed in very different ways. Purdue vigorously denies the allegations and says we are an industry leader in the development of abuse deterrent technology, advocating for the use of prescription drug monitoring programs and supporting access to naloxone. Meanwhile, the AG's office continues to investigate four other drug manufacturers. We're hoping that they will now produce documents as we've asked them to. Tonight, Senator Maggie Hassan saying drug makers have long been running a campaign of deception and that it's time for real change. You can read the full lawsuit on our website at WMUR.com. Reporting live in the studio, Mike Cronin, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that report. Child injured after falling off seawall in Lynn. Let's take a listen to this video from WCVB. little boy rushed to the hospital after a terrifying fall off a seawall. New Center 5's Julie Lonchik live in Lynn with some new information. Julie. Marie and Ben, we have learned this child is three. He's a little boy and he fell some 15 feet right off the side of the seawall before being rushed to the hospital this evening. This happened around 6.30 tonight at Red Rock Park in Lynn. Fire officials tell me the toddler was with his mother when this happened. He fell to the sand and the rocks below. It was low tide, so rescue crews were able to get to him quickly. He was conscious and crying when they got to him, but I'm told he was pretty banged up. He was taken first to a North Shore hospital. At this hour, we do not have an update on his condition. For now, we're live with this breaking news in Lynn. Julie Lonchek, WCVB News Center 5. Okay, and there you go on that report. New technology helps crews reach people during emergencies. Let's take a listen to this video from WMTW News 8 in Maine. All right, yeah. Open up the Okay. And turn off the car. Grandma, how have you been at this to me? You know, you can use the... 
reaching people in case of an emergency in Cumberland County. It's now getting easier thanks to advancements in technology. WMTW News 8's Morgan Sturdivant shows us how the Code Red Emergency Alert system works. I'm here at the 911 Center for Cumberland County. This team behind me has a big job to do, and it's one that's made easier with technology like Code Red. Full service dispatch center for 16 municipalities in Cumberland County, and uh, we do a dispatch for police, fire, and rescue. It's very stressful, but also very rewarding. I mean, you get the opportunity to actually help people every day. And getting the opportunity to help people every day is made easier with programs and technology like Code Red, their rapid emergency notification service. It's actually a very good communication program for us. It has a lot of benefits. Uh, such if we would have a gas leak and I need to evacuate to a certain area, I can actually call that area out within seconds rather than minutes. With Code Red, the center can get alerts out about emergencies in a specific area or for the entire county. It's all on a database. I enter one button, I look at a particular area, it pulls it, I can send one message to everybody instantaneously. Alerts go out as phone calls, texts, and emails. They're hoping to get as many people signed up to Code Red as possible. People can call them directly to get signed up or simply go online. Go to cumberlandcounty.org, O-R-G. All the way down to the bottom of the page is an icon for Code Red. So if they can opt into the program, that means they can actually get those notifications regardless of where they are. So it, it makes a really big difference for us. In Wyndham, Morgan Sturdivant, WMDW News 8. Okay, and there you go on that report. Very cool technology there. Nuclear crisis is flaring in Korea and China's markets don't seem to care. China's Financial markets are shrugging off rising tension between U.S. and North Korea. We're following some breaking news. A vehicle hits six soldiers in Paris suburb. Six French soldiers were injured on Wednesday morning after a vehicle struck them in the Paris suburb of Lavalache, Parat, according to local authorities. The soldiers were reportedly leaving an army bar barracks area near De Vadon, a public square, when the vehicle slammed into them and fled the scene, according to local authorities. Two of the soldiers were seriously injured. Lavalost Parat Mayor Patrick said it appeared to be a deliberate attack. Authorities said police are still searching for the vehicle and driver as of early Wednesday morning. North Korea threatens missile strike on Guam that will create an enveloping fire. Let's take a listen to this video from ABC News. Trump's fire and fury, his military threats to North Korea, a chilling warning in response to Kim Jong-un's threats to the United States. Here's ABC's chief global affairs correspondent, Martha Raddatz. North Korea best not make any more threats to the United States. They will be met with fire and fury like the world has never seen. He has been very threatening 
beyond a normal statement. And as I said, they will be met with fire, fury, and frankly, power, the likes of which this world has never seen before. This dramatic escalation of rhetoric all the more alarming given the latest extraordinary intelligence assessments of North Korea's nuclear capabilities. First reported in the Washington Post and confirmed by ABC News, U.S. intelligence analysts believe the North can now produce a miniaturized nuclear warhead that can fit inside its missiles, including its intercontinental ballistic missiles. Kim Jong-un's claim that he was standing next to such a nuclear device last March was met with some skepticism. But this latest intelligence assessment says he has indeed produced that device. This is the most momentous day in his nuclear program. Just two weeks ago, Kim tested an ICBM into space, going higher and farther than ever before. But analysts say if the missile trajectory was lowered, the missile could potentially reach the east coast of the United States, including New York and Washington, D.C. There are still two pieces of the puzzle left. One is he has to show that he's able to have that nuclear warhead survive the heat of reentry. And the second is that he has to be able to accurately target it. Okay, and there you go on that report. And that does it for the Riley King newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your Wednesday, and I'll see you back here later on today. Goodbye, everyone.